Hi, how everything's going well and you're having a great day. I'm going to do this video on the Titan submersible that uh, didn't quite make its full journey with five people on board. This is what they were going to see. $225,000 for probably a three hour trip if they made it down to the bottom of going over a bunch of rust and I'm sure for some it would be interesting most of these people go down there because they're trying to retrieve valuables that they can resell as historical pieces at auction and so forth but it depends on whether or not you're worth it now I feel experiments are good you know that's how we do these things We've had experimental rockets, we've had experimental trips into space, experimental moonwalks, and the stuff these people used was just horrific. So the fact that this submersible was made up of some very shoddy sounding stuff, see it had an acrylic window for the passengers to look out of. And acrylic that just means plastic very thick plastic and then it had a carbon fiber body and carbon fiber is more like I'll tell you, for you when you look at it it looks like paper mache it has metal type fibers going through it um, but you know if there's a problem this stuff is not going to be great. And then it's attached to a, a titanium dome that you see in the front with a bigger window for the pilot to look out of. And that's what they were going in. So it's a typical experimental vehicle, you know, shoddily put together. They were using a PlayStation. Um, thing to move and maneuver this thing and so put together by scraps that light on the top came from a camper store and these are demonstrating people sitting inside the vehicle this is how close together and swished swish together they would have been for two to three hours as they go down then they would be three hours on the bottom still in this position but able to peek out of a small window one at a time and then two to three hours to rise to the top so this is what six nine hours in this position and then there was a small um, container area where they could put their pee and poop I think they put it in baggies or something so you know, these people are old. I think they're able to do what they want with the rest of their lives. They're what, in their middle 50s to 70s. So they've lived their lives. I do feel that it's not right to put a 19-year-old in this kind of position because he has his life to live and he is not able to assess these materials and the safety of this vehicle. This is one of the people who said that the vehicle needed more testing. And this is the chief executive um, Stockton Rush. And he did not want to put the vehicle through independent inspection process. Now when you have a vehicle that's put together like this, you have to inspect it all the time. Every time you put it down, it has to go through a full inspection for cracks, any defects that might have occurred in the last trip. Um, make sure that it can hold up, withstand the pressure. And even with pressure testing, you can find that the pressure testing might cause a crack. So you're constantly testing 
and for those who remember our early um, spaceships they had these tiles plopped on them and they were to prevent um, heat getting through to the people inside of the spaceship. We had the Challenger disaster where everybody exploded before the visitors' eyes as they ascended because there was a small leak of gas. And so that these experimental things are very dangerous. People do die. And if you're not thoroughly careful, that's what happens. Now I kind of expected the Challenger problem because they had a teacher on board and they had the first black astronaut. So I figured people were not going to take the same type of concern to make sure it was safe. And so I wasn't real surprised when the Challenger um, exploded, even though I was surprised because it was so shocking to see it. But this is what happens when you have these things going into space, going under the ocean. This is the kind of stuff that happens. See this particular man, I think he's he's in his 70s. This is Jane Cameron. And he was one of the people who commented on the whole thing. I'm not sure. I think he went up to in the past. This is the man who was in the current um, mission of the submersible and he was of course killed. I think this is the billionaire. And it takes a lot of services, you know, and our military, our navy and so forth learns a lot when they have to go for these rescue missions. So although we don't like these things, it does make our servicemen uh, test out their equipment, test out their skills, and so they do get some experience and training which make them better at their own jobs when they do these rescue missions. But I think before you do this kind of trip, you should notify everybody so that people can be on the alert. When you just give them a surprise, well then people are out doing things. They may not be prepared to come on a rescue mission. So it's going to take longer to assemble everybody and it's going to be more difficult to do a rescue. Even if they had found these people, they wouldn't have been able to rescue them because it was all a surprise. This is the man with his son. What's his name? Shazada Dawood and his son Suleiman. Suleiman was only 19 and he was killed in this expedition. And then this is, um, see, a British billionaire, Hamish Harding. He was on, and he's, in, he's older, so, you know, this is what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. And a lot of these guys have gone on space missions and other things. I mean, they're just adventurers, and they're willing to sacrifice their life for these new adventures. And that's okay, but just... Make sure, don't take the kids. Don't take the kids. And this is what it looks like. These are the rescue boats, I believe. And there he's showing off the PlayStation gadget that he uses to maneuver the vessel. Okay, I'm running out of uh, battery, so I'm going to say bye. Please like and subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Bye.